So this is actually all rumors. Um, they actually didn't hate each other. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And so that's everybody like bleeding up to the movie. We're like, they hate each other. They hate each other. That's got to be so weird. Not uh, awful. And it just turns out that they they're just really awkward. It's just beyond this door. What is? My playroom. Like your Xbox and stuff. I mean, you can see it from the movie too. It's not that hard to believe that they're just like, we don't know what to do with our hands. <laughs> Do I put them on her where? What? I put the clamps where? <laughs> the clamps. Just why can't I hold all these nipple clamps? <laughs> What's the deal? <laughs> where does the writing crop go? I put it. What? <laughs> it sounds like the way you're describing it sounds like a Woody Allen directed it. <laughs> I, I, I would eat. watch that movie. Do you treat all the girls you desire this way? Yes. So yes, I undress them oh, and tie do? them up. Yes, oh, I learned wow. that in the Boy Scouts. I, I I don't know where to put put these clamps. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, do you put it on the tip or the or, or fully in? <laughs> Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world when there are millions of dollars on the line. And we are going to talk about these disastrous, never-ending, and sometimes dangerous productions. This is The Shit Show. Hello, everyone. My name is Ian, and I am joined by Clint. Hello. And Ray. hey And this is The Shit Show. So this weekend was to be the release of Fast 9, the, the Fast Saga mm-hmm. that continues, mm-hmm. but was, of course, just like everything else, coronavirus, uh, was delayed a full year. So it was pushed all the way until next year damn and i have a video um essay planned for the entire fast and the furious franchise oh Um, Oh, god and i was going to concede it with the release of next year's fast 10 which is now going to be fast 9 um which is now going to be called slow (laughs) because we're getting up there yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) obviously it would include um some about paul walker's death um, unfortunate death, but a bigger portion of why those films would fall under the banner of Shit Show is Vin Diesel and his immense control of that franchise and how his ego is just running amok on there. Mm. Mm. And with that is his feud with Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Ooh. And those two like hate each other. Really? They cannot stand each other. It's and- because of Vin Diesel's Giant ego, iron giant ego. Yeah, yeah. I did it. I go. did it. I, I put it in there. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know there. I'm really interested. I didn't know there was a feud. I know they, they absolutely hate oh. each other. And the the Fast Eight, I think, in that there are scenes between the two of them, and you can tell that they're never in the same room. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, they they cannot stand each other. Let's just put them in the same room. Let's see what happens. Put a camera in One there. One of film them it. would kick the shit out of the other. Yeah. Have anyway, you ever heard of the we're not people's say elbow? Which, <laughs> we're not going to say which one would kick the shit out of the other. Yeah. One. That's for you that's guys to guess. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hash it out in the comments, and we will. I, I will get into all of that um, for a, a future video. Um, but today, let's talk about other actors who hated working with each other. Okay. Oh. Hmm. I said, hey, Tommy, how you doing? Like that, and the blood just drained from his face. <laughs> he started shaking, and he got up, and he went, mm, ar, 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 like this. He must have been in mid-kill-me <laughs> fantasy or something like that. He was like, ah, 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 like this, and he went like to hug me, and yeah. he said, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like you. Unlike me, I love working with the two of you. Oh, well, this is awkward. Uh, You invited me into your home. (laughs) Yeah, but we put up a piece of plate glass. (laughs) There's literally literally a pane of glass between us. We are social distancing hard, but not because of the virus. We just don't like Clint. Yeah. God, Phil. Even though we can see him, there's- Please sit at the other end of that table. (laughs) Over there, further, further away. Even though we can see him, 
just the idea of something between us makes me more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't be in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing keeping me from punching you in the face. At all well, times. what the listeners don't really know is that you guys have already pre-recorded your segment, and then I am just <laughs> adding my stuff in recorded later. He's in a completely different room in a different house. Yeah, I recorded this three days later. <laughs> <laughs> just laughing at random shit. That's why it sounds so fake. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> There are tons of these types of stories, and listeners, if you know of some that I don't cover today, let us know. Send us a tweet, and we could do a part two. And there's also a lot of actors that come up a lot that I think I eventually will turn into their own episodes, covering just like that one person. In... Oh, like that person's a shit show? Yeah, like the, the kind of the difficult nature of that particular person, like uh, Charlie Sheen. Mm. Or, um, mm. sorry to say, January, Bill Murray. Oh, Bill. Well, it's warranted, though. He's allowed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, to, to start this off, Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes in Romeo and Juliet. Oh. So, That interesting. seems like not a good idea for a movie right? about two people who love each other the most. You will yeah. see a very consistent theme of a lot of the times it's people that were supposed to be romantically linked in the movie. Mm. So I bet those two are pretty glad that the characters each died. Yeah. <laughs> right. At least she's dead. At least he's dead. <laughs> so Claire Danes thought uh, Leonardo was annoying, childish prankster, and he thought she was uptight. And they avoided each other when Classic not filming. Classic me-cute scenario. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> They're married now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one hurts a little bit. Uh, Kenny Baker and Anthony Daniels. January, you know who what? those are? Really? R two D two and C three PO. Yes, the from two Star Wars. like the two best friends <laughs> ever, of, right? ever. Like they like yeah. Burton Ernie. Who? No, like R two D two and C three PO. He even says it in the last film. Like oh, I'm so glad I have a best friend. Yeah. Like you are uh, to Kenny Baker and Anthony Daniels, huh? Yeah. Okay, so and so okay, hold on though. Explain to me how this is possible. So Anthony Daniels was in a suit on mm -hmm. set. Yeah. yeah. And Kenny Baker Kenny... was in the trash can. Was he? Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depended he... on whether or not they needed it for like uh, removing around, like if he was oh. remote control or whatever. Yeah. Apparently, Anthony Daniels is kind of a dick. And uh, you don't say. <laughs> Kenny Baker. <laughs> An uptight gold British say. bot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to say about your earlier comment about where C-3PO is like, you're my best friend. I feel like it doesn't go the other way. Like, yeah. I feel like R2-D2 is like, this fucking guy. Girl, bitch, please. Beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, beep. Like, in his, like, in he's, his he's beep boops. Beep, he's beeping constantly. Fuck you. Get the fuck away from me. Yeah, yeah. he's literally censoring himself with every <laughs> goddamn word. So, those are some sarcastic beeps. <laughs> There's YouTube videos out there where people will put in subtitles for what R2 is really saying, and they're really funny. <laughs> and probably accurate. Yeah. Um, okay, so so Kenny Baker has talked about Anthony Daniels a couple of times. Um, one of these stories he tells Metro UK, I thought it was just me he didn't get on with, but recently I found out he doesn't get on with anyone. He's been such an awkward person over the years. If you just calm down and socialize with everyone, we could make a fortune touring around making personal appearances. Oh, yeah. I've asked him four times now, but the last time he looked down his nose at me like I was a piece of shit. He said... I don't do many of these conventions. Go away, little man. Oh. He really degraded me and made me feel small for want of a better expression. He's rude to everyone though, including the fans. Interesting. Cuz you see him like like on like the like the special features for, you know, you know, the different Star Wars films. He seems like a totally nice dude. No, that's well, just C-3PO. That's just C-3PO. Well, yeah. C-3PO is kind of up title as, you know, as well. I was going to say like there's nothing worse than an actor who's uh, what's sort of like indignant of their fans, like the people who built their careers, yeah. right? And they're just like, mm. the it's reason like, you fuck still have a you. job, yeah. yeah. Like, what? Yeah, like what the fuck else are you doing being in a movie if you don't have fans or people to go see it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson, really, oh in X Files. Oh. So this one is not that scandalous, but um, Duchovny told also told Metro UK. We used to argue about nothing. We couldn't stand the sight of each other. Wait, they used to argue about nothing? Like, you know, just oh, like, like they, little they would, things. They, oh, okay. they would just, you know, blow up on set. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so like a marriage. Yeah. 
<laughs> guys are getting a real close insight uh, okay. to uh, what's Good going thing that pane of glass is there. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> that should protect me. <laughs> uh, familiarity breeds contempt. It's nothing to do with the other person. All that fades away, and you're just left with the appreciation and love for the people you've worked with for so long. So they've kissed and met up, you know, like, mm. Mm. but they, they did apparently start getting at each other a lot. Yeah. Again, I mean, like when you're just in a room and on in working with someone that many hours that long, you're just like, I will f- murder you if yeah. you don't remove yourself from my, my presence. Yeah. yeah. Is Metro UK a tabloid? Why are all these people like... <laughs> Shenan- talking, about, yeah. talking about their shenanigans to this one newspaper. <laughs> uh, I would say it's a little in between a legit newspaper and a tabloid. So it's not quite the Inquirer. Yes. It's, it's a not quite bloid. people. It's yeah. more like Us Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perfect right? metaphor. Perfect. Great. Got For it. all you news heads out there. Yeah. It's not Meghan Markle lives in California. It's not Bat Boy lives. <laughs> It's Bat Boy lives in California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what's Oprah reading? You know, that's what it is. Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan in Fifty Shades of Grey, Jenny Ray's favorite oh, film series. They are my favorite movies to hate watch. <laughs> I I did not love realize that she's Don them. Johnson's daughter. Mm-hmm. And and. Melanie, Melanie Griffin. Griffin. Yeah. With her face intact. Yeah. Intact face. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, they're my favorite movies to hate watch. They're so terrible. They're so f- fun and so stupid. I I highly recommend just get drunk and watch watch those <laughs> movies and just, yeah. Does so, it, I, have, I haven't seen them, but like I understand like the first one's like pretty hot and heavy. Does it get like tamer over the... The course of the three films? It's like, oh, they try to like squeeze in these other plots to make it more interesting where it's like, oh, like someone wants some money and they are looking to like kidnap her and like business um, espionage. Like, so they try oh. to like make it a whole thing. So like they, there is less of a focus on like their relationship and on the BDSM as it goes, but there's still like plenty of that stuff in there. So, okay. So the, speaking of the, that, that kind of stuff. I remember hearing these stories about this, and this is why I'm bringing it up, obviously. Um, but the the rumors of them hating each other. Speaking of a hot and heavy, how awkward is that shit? Oh, I hate you so much. Um, yeah, why well, they're just fake fucking. Yeah, yeah. when yeah. you have to be, it's like you have to be s- sexy on camera with another person with a room full of people. That's already awkward as hell. And then if you're like, I, f- I hate this guy. Like, how are you... Yeah, and that's why the sex scenes, that's the thing is that like the the setup and the scenario of those sex scenes is like, mm, like they should be hotter than they are, but you're just like, mm, mm. no. It's because, a Because uh, he's mostly uh. a creep. They couldn't use like their hatred for one another to like- <laughs> Emphasize. To emphasize like the BDSM. I, I mean, you would think, you'd think that that would work, yeah. but no. But see, that's the thing is like their hatred didn't manifest in like like raw sexual like energy or anything. It was just like boring. Apathy. Yeah, it was like, ap- exactly. It was apathy. Mm. So this is actually all rumors. Um, they actually didn't hate each other. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And so that's everybody like leading up to the movie were like, they hate each other. They hate each other. That's got to be so weird and uh, awful. And it just turns out that they, they're just really awkward. And when they're oh. giving <laughs> interviews and stuff, they were yeah. doing like press junkets and they're just kind of awkward people. And they're I mean, actually good friends. You can <laughs> tell in, I mean, you can see it from the movie too. It's not that hard to believe that they're just like, we don't know what to do with our hands. <laughs> <laughs> Do I put them on her where? What? I put the clamps where? <laughs> the clamps. Just why can't I hold all these nipple clamps? <laughs> What's the deal? <laughs> where does the riding crop go? I put it. What? <laughs> it sounds like the way you're describing it sounds like a Woody Allen directed it. I, mean, I would I mean, watch that movie. I, I I don't know where to put put these clamps. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, do you put it on the tip or the or, or fully in? <laughs> That's the question. Yeah. How now much I'd... of the areola am I supposed to get in? <laughs> I would watch that movie. Um, <laughs> next one. Uh, Sophia Bush and Chad Michael Murray. 
Um, from oh, one, one tree. One oh. tree. <laughs> you completely you watch, lost really? me there. I did watch one tree. <laughs> really? I'm more of a Gilmore Girls guy. <laughs> Got nothing for you on that. On I this, love on this topic. Girls. I'm more of a guy, more guys gal. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is the the gender bent this alternate universe. Male Gilmore reboot. Girls is guy more guys. Oh my god, I want to make that so bad now. Too. Can you imagine? Just a shot for shot remake. You're just, yeah, same script. Just gender swap everybody. Yeah, it could still be Rory. Yeah, it could still be Rory and uh, what was the other one? Lorelai. Lorelai. Mm, that's a male version of Lorelai. <laughs> Boy, lie. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> One Tree Hill. <laughs> no, we have another. This is more. Important. No, it's funny you say Chad Michael Murray because he yeah. was in Gilmore Girls. Oh, really? For a oh, few, for like a season oh. or two. Okay, so I One Tree Hill. So if you if you have some experience, it. okay. My sister watched it, and I remember at the time her watching it because I thought it was really strange. Um, so the two of them met on the show and got married during the third season. Their marriage lasted five months. Mm. Mm, yeah. Okay. And then they, uh, Murray was still on the show for another three seasons. And I remember my sister watching this and thinking about that, like how fucking awkward that is for the makers of the of a TV show to be like, oh shit, my leads got married. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they don't bring any of that shit to set. And five months later, they're already divorced. Yeah. Like, and they spent another three seasons just. Being together. Was she on it longer after that? Yeah. Okay. A little bit longer. Bush um, said that the producers actually used their breakup for publicity for the show. Mm. So like, so that's probably why I heard about it. You know? <laughs> ching, ching. Yeah. yeah. Like being just total dicks. Now, on a related note, it should be noted that the showrunner was accused of sexual harassment and physical emotional manipulation of 18 female cast and crew members. Oh, my God. During the Me Too Time's up, motherfucker. Yeah. So, fuck yeah. that guy. Yeah. Um, another one. This one will hurt Jenny Ray. Uh, will Smith and Janet Hubert from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Are you a Fresh Prince fan? Um, I mean, West Philadelphia, born and raised. <laughs> in the um, playground get, where I spent most of my days. Don't even get me started. First of all, <laughs> I wasn't actually a really big Fresh Prince fan. I'm just like a super big fan of the theme song. Oh, okay. So like Wait, Will Smith and, and, and the... um, she played and Viv. Okay. Wasn't she replaced? Yes. Yeah. So Hubert claims that uh, Will Smith wasn't helping with pay negotiations. So the show became really popular and he was kind of a little bit of a hothead. You know, he was the big new thing. And as she said, he was young, in, um, was young, inexperienced and needed to win. And... She's never kind of forgave him for that, mm. kind of just kind of mm. screwing them over. They were going to get pay raises, but they didn't. But he did because he was the star. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and he didn't. He didn't. And he just like didn't like, give a shit about anyone else. Didn't throw Essentially, them yeah. Um, yeah. Hubert had a baby, um, which violated her contract. And so she was fired. Oh. And that's so bullshit. Yeah. Well, I mean, you think about it for TV shows, like for a long like the TV shows that they did where it's those kind of where they can't zoom in on people all the time oh. to hide a belly, right? Because it's multi-cam yeah. like and it's yeah. sitcom style. and you're Film in... for a live studio audience. Yeah, and you can't really hide it a, a belly. So yeah, it, it's still kind of, it's kind of crap. I mean, but you know what they do now is they just write a fucking plot where like a character's pregnant. Like that's yeah. happened in a show well, that I'm watching right now. No, that's mm -hmm. literally what happens to yeah. Aunt Viv. Because she goes into the hospital to give birth, and, and that was what? like the that was the and end. What happens? Hold on, hold on. That was the end of one of the seasons. Um, but then Smith was being asked about why she left the show or why she wasn't on it anymore on a radio show, and he says, "I can say straight up that Janet Hubert wanted the show to be the Aunt Viv of Bel Air show because I know she was going to dog me in the press. She's mad now, but she's been mad all along." Keep in mind, this is again. This is a very young Will Smith, mm -hmm. kind of cocky. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. the hot shit right now. You know, he's since widely known as very nice guy. But there is the third season is where she's replaced and she has the baby, and then she comes back and there's a scene with Jazzy, Jazz, 
There's a character. D- DJ Jazzy Jeff. DJ yeah. Jazzy Jeff. So he comes up and he's like, oh, hi, I'm Aunt Viv. And he goes, oh, you look, you look very different after having a baby. Oh, so he, they they write it in. To, yeah, and like, then Will Smith that? like looks at the camera like, mm, like what? Oh, he caught on to that laugh yeah. track. Starts. Laugh track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They I mean, I it. mean, I mean. Let's be honest. Like, your body changes after you have a baby. Like, <laughs> like totally into your a whole different face, person. Your yeah. whole voice. It's like all it's like it. you know face off face off technology. It's never the same. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay, so this next one is for Clint. Oh no, William Shatner and George Takei. Oh, I knew about that. Yeah. Yeah. So these two have been at it for years. And in 1994 autobiography, Takei said Shatner pretended to not know who Takei was. I guess I don't, I've never really watched the original series that much. Yeah. I don't know how much interaction they actually have. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, you have three seasons of a show where each one is in, you know, each episode. I mean, I don't know how much interaction they actually had on, like on screen. I have to watch the series again. I mean, but. I mean, he's part of the crew, right? You're yeah, gonna interact that's true. with yeah. the crew. He's on he's on the bridge. Yeah, he's on the bridge. Yeah. You know, they go on away missions, even though that's not Starfleet, you know, protocol. <laughs> the captain always stays on the ship. So he disobeyed protocol all the time. Um and and the and the prime directive. He he fucked with that all the time. Is that um, why Takei was mad? He's just like, Stop fucking with the prime directive <laughs> yeah. and breaking protocol. Motherfucker. He's not yeah. method enough. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, so, I mean, I don't do any research on this, but I've heard like, yeah, they did have like fights and you know, there was, you know, uh, you not, they weren't very friendly towards each other, but I've heard like in recent years, like that's kind of mellowed out. They're older now. They're friendlier. I don't know. It kind of goes back and forth. Um, so there's this online interview. This is every source I can find. It says online interview that quotes Shatner and I cannot find what this actually comes from but people quote it everywhere but i can't find the original source to this and the quote is shatner talking about decay there's such a sickness there it's so painfully obvious that there's a psychosis there i didn't know him very well on the series he'd come in for a day or two as evidenced by the role he played there must be something else inside george that is festering and it makes him so unhappy that he takes it out on me and in effect a total stranger that just seems like a like a burn. Like he's just like I didn't even. He wasn't even on the set that much. Yeah. He wasn't that important. He's obviously psychotic. And then like George Decay is like that motherfucker. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not gonna say like Shatner's right or he's wrong, but I mean, like I've been in the workplace where I see somebody like you know maybe a couple times a day. I don't really know much about that person, yeah. you know. And, but as we as we as fans or as viewers of a franchise that we're watching, we think, oh. They're, They're on the show together. Friends. They're all the best friends, right? Like, oh, they they must know each other. And if you know, you are. You know, but I mean, there's people I work with that I don't see all the time. They're in my office, but I don't see them, and I don't know really much about them. Yeah, yeah. You know? So I mean, I get it, but I mean, it, you, but us as watchers, we just automatically assume like, oh, they're best yeah, pals. they're all together. Yeah, and you know, people have different shooting I mean, schedules. Yeah, well, people have different. You, you get along with some people, you don't get along with others. Um, oh, I thought you were talking about how, like, even though the crew is working 12 hours a day, that, like, the actors might come in and do an hour shoot and then go sit in their trailers by themselves yeah, for, like, true too. 10 hours of the day. Um, in 2015, Takei tells ABC, it's difficult working with someone who is not a team player. The rest of the cast all understand what makes a scene work. It's everybody contributing to it. But Bill is a wonderful actor, and he knows it. And he likes to have the camera on him all the time. So I know you said you couldn't find the original source for that Shatner quote. Yeah. But like the difference between those quotes tells me that I feel like Takei is the more reasonable person who's yes. probably right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because like Shatner's quote makes it sound like he's just like, well, it's not my fault. Like it's very like Trumpian <laughs> where he's just like, but I'm, yeah. I'm great and everyone else is crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, it makes sense. Everybody, Shatner's known for his ego. Yeah. Right. Um, is it huge? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Which Decay... makes me sad because I love Star Trek. And... I know. <laughs> I know. That's why I had to put this one yeah. in here. Um, later, TK said, it's all coming from Bill. Whenever he needs a little publicity for a project, he pumps on the so-called controversy between us. Mm. So there's there's a bunch of stuff kind of like that. Um, but it kind of goes back and forth where TK kind of downplays it a little bit and then also goes yeah he's an ass <laughs> like <laughs> i don't really care for him so it just kind of goes back and forth yeah 
See, and I heard that there was like infighting between Shatner and and Leonard Nimoy as well. But like then I hear like, oh no, they're actually like really good friends. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe they weren't close when yeah. they were uh, doing the TV show, but then they got like they became real friends during the movies or whatever. Right, you know, things change. Yeah, yeah. Um, next one is just really heartbreaking. Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling in The Notebook. <sighs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I never saw it. I never saw it either. Was that I? <laughs> Nicholas Sparks, is that who it is? Like that's yep. like the Nicholas Sparks movies is what yeah. I call them. I mean, I don't know anything about it. Yeah, okay. I mean I well, like, I well, like I'll both. just go, I like go, both of them as actors. Yeah, I'll just glaze over it real quick then. Uh the director Nick Cassavetes told at VH one that they had to uh Gosling asked to have Mickey Adams removed from the set so he could just do all his scenes with the stand in. Um, and then they were forced to be in therapy together and they yelled and screamed at each other until cooler heads prevailed. And then they, or they came out and were ready to finish the movie. They're like, fuck it. Let's just get this over with. Yeah. And then he said, the director said, and it got better after that. You know, they had it out. I think Ryan respected her for standing up for her character and Rachel was happy to get that out in the open. The rest of the film wasn't smooth sailing, but it was smoother sailing. Hmm. Again, I mean, characters who are supposed to love each other. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a problem. I guess it speaks to the caliber of actor that they are, because everyone seems to think that movie is like the epitome of romantic amazingness. So obviously, they were able to get past it enough that it showed. Or maybe it was that love-hate thing where they're just like, we hate each other so much. And everyone's like, it's so passionate. Yeah. But it was just like <laughs> rage. rage. <laughs> we're rage kissing in the rain. Kissing in the rain is not that great. Like, <laughs> isn't you're cold. Fun. You're cold. <laughs> kissing um, underwater as well. That's that's stupid. You done a lot of kissing in your day, Clint? Just, yes. <laughs> in weird Reenacting places. all these movie <laughs> moments. Yeah. I was like, okay. Well, let's see. Uh, I really love this moment from the trailer of the Notebook. <laughs> yeah. I was like, check that one off. There you go. No, kissing underwater like in a pool is hard. You can't breathe. <laughs> Your mouths are cut off, and so you have to kiss. You have to breathe through your nose when you're kissing, right? Who's, wh- I d- why? Why well, were you? How like, much this amount is a good of idea. kissing? Look, you see it happen in the movies, and you're like, okay, let's try it out. Just, you're, if you're in high school, you're like, let's do it. Uh, speaking of more love, here we go. Uh, Nick Nolte and Julia Roberts in I Love Trouble. Now, this is a movie probably none of us have ever seen. I've heard of it. It's a 1994 rom com, and the LA Times was talking about how Roberts hated. Nolte was uh, machismo and later called him at times disgusting. And then he he kind of knew that she hated him, so he kept kind of prodding her, oh, kind of yeah. making Ugh. it worse. And then they spent a lot of time with their um, stand-ins. The reason why I bring this one up is because rumoredly they changed the marketing from a rom-com to an action comedy based off the tension between the two of them on screen. <laughs> Like, what a fun, interesting pivot. He did not age well. <laughs> no, he did not. She looks but great, though. Was, she so. looks great. He looks like a bearded pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually him in Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, that's his real face. <laughs> this is the way. Bearded pizza. Um, Never seen the movie, but I'm Team Julia on that one. That's yeah. that's funny that you say Don't that. Don't much care for Nick Nolte. I know. Uh, watching, I watched the trailer for it, and I was like, "Damn, he was kind of handsome then." But she, she's, she might actually be her own episode as well because she has been kind of difficult. Uh, America's sweetheart. Yep. Uh, Nolte years later, responding to what she said, it's not nice to call someone disgusting, but she's not a nice person. Everyone knows that. Mm. Ooh, shots fired. <laughs> years later like anyone gives a shit anymore right <laughs> I mean obviously we're still talking about it so. oh yeah damn <laughs> it I'm like completely like <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> this one kind of hurts a little bit this is one you probably don't know about uh, Stana Kotick and Nathan Fillion in Castle so that the TV show that I never watched but the two were forced into couples therapy because they were at it so bad and per Nathan Fillion's contract, he and Caddick only filmed two days a week during their eighth season. What? Two yeah. days a week? Yeah. 
just <laughs> they're reduce like, it. We're never possible. gonna get this show done, <laughs> yeah, Nathan. The more you drag it out, the longer you have to spend time with her. I don't care. So one source <laughs> who told us weekly said Stana would cry on set because Nathan was such a bully to her. Interesting. Oh, well, now I feel bad. Now, yeah. Us Weekly is Nathan, the American but... metric UK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. That's... oh gotcha. right back to that. <laughs> okay. um, a second source said Stana would go into her dressing room and cry. A lot of people who work on the show don't like Nathan. It's not just her. The friction was very evident. Nathan has been nasty to Stana for a long time. Stana was a pro, just wanted to get in there and do her job. Yeah, I hate this story because Nathan. it's like Nathan Fillion is kind of like the nerd hero. America's yeah. sweetheart, Nathan Fillion? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it just kind of sucks because such everybody loves Nathan Fillion. Captain Mal? Yeah. Hmm. I know, sad. Rumoredly, ABC wanted to ditch uh, Kodak for season nine because she was becoming too expensive, mm. even though Nathan Fillion, they were paying, you know, and, but he was the title character, right? <laughs> so... He was uh, did the it Fresh matter? Prince of Castle. <laughs> yeah. uh, did the it matter? Castle of Bel Air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it didn't matter because Castle was canceled after its eighth season, and fans got a really terrible series finale. It literally, the the point of it was supposed to end on a cliffhanger of them both being shot. They're married. They get shot, and it was like, oh no, what what's going to happen to him? And it was supposed to cut to black, and then the next season, but <laughs> because they knew where they were going to be canceled, they put on this like minute and a half tacked on ending where it's like they're shot and they're laying there ble bleeding out and then the camera pans over and it's all like several years later and then they're like sitting around there with their family and their kids and they're like oh we just love each other and it was like that's the end of your show oh wow like if you love that show that was the ending i'd be so furious yeah no i just i just cut to black leave <laughs> <Right>. it open <laughs> just leave it open did. yeah Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones in Batman Forever. Oh, really? I see. Yes. I can, I'll talk about this one all day. <laughs> Batman Forever sucks. Um, we're in a feud now because I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, do really? you really? It's terrible, but I love it. Oh, uh, see, you could. That's that fine. was like the Batman of my childhood. That's so funny. I, I watched that movie. That way, that that's one with Uma Thurman is. Um, no, that's Batman. That's and Batman Robin. and Robin. Oh shit! Never mind. Just kidding. I don't know what the fuck this movie is. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey and Val, oh, is the Riddler. Riddler yes. Val Kilmer as Batman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. No, 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 sorry. Batman and Robin is the one that I liked a lot. That one is <laughs> also more garbage. It's yeah. also terrible. That's no, a, I'm yeah, that's... I'm fully aware that it's a shitty movie. <laughs> that's a garbage fire right there. I watched it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my so, Ian, you and I, we love Batman. Yes, I I recently rewatched Batman nineteen eighty nine, mm -hmm. maybe like a year ago, and it's been a while since I'd watched it. And I I see what Tim Burton was trying to do with it, mm -hmm. and I appreciated him more for it because there was a lot of Batman sixty six camera angles. There was a lot of homage paying to the to the old series, but it was still dark and it still felt like a comic yeah. book movie. And I still love it. He tried to do the same thing with Batman Returns. I don't think he really was as successful. I still love Batman Returns. But then Schumacher takes, and he's like, let's go a little bit more over the top. Yeah, he wanted to bring it kind of back to the Adam West. Yeah. He's like, let's make yeah. Gotham, a dark, gritty city, look like Las Vegas at midnight. Like, <laughs> neon. Yeah. And like, that neon is Vegas. Neon yeah. is not Let's Gotham. make the Batmobile glow. Yeah. Like, like it, what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Batmobile is already like kind of a large car that you can't miss, but let's make it like... Yeah, a target. Is that Batman? Oh yeah, yes, obviously. Yeah, it's it's obviously it's glowing. So I don't, I don't know anything about this feud, but I'm just Team Jim because yeah, I just love Jim Carrey. Well, okay, well, the most of all time. It's, this is a pretty easy one. Um, so Carrey has told this story both on Howard Stern and Norm Macdonald live. So Carrey was at a he he goes to a restaurant and he approaches Tommy Lee Jones, who's he's at the at the same restaurant, and it's while filming was still going on, and Carrey's like just kind of went there to say hi hello <laughs> and jones he's like tommy Lee jones stood up and just looked very angry and he kind of came in for like a hug and he said to jim carrey i hate you i really don't like you i cannot sanction your buffoonery <laughs> i cannot sanction your buffoonery <laughs> i was just gonna say that tommy lee jones seems like the most humorless motherfucker yeah. of all time there's well, a gif of it a that makes no sense. Watch the movie. <laughs> Two Face, the the, the Harvey Dent, the Two Face that he plays 
is a buffoon. Yeah, and he's comical. He's yeah, comical. Like he's like really outlandish. Over yeah. the top. Like, yeah. <laughs> I can't stand your buffoon. I can't sanction your buffoonery. <laughs> Let me talk like this when I'm doing my two face voice. Like, fuck you. Yeah, it's like, it's like. Maybe he was just jealous because he's like, Okay, I'm a ser- like I do mostly dramatic serious roles. I'm going to kind of put myself out there. I'm going to try to be funny and then Jim Carrey steps in and is just like uh, 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 hold my beer. Yeah. I do this all the time and maybe Remember he was just when jealous. I talked from my ass? That's what that's what Jim Carrey was going to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, the perfect Remember when I talked that. through my ass and it was funnier than anything you did in yeah. this movie? <laughs> That's perfect that you said that. So Joel Schumacher, um, who directed Batman Forever, history's greatest and, monster, <laughs> and the and the client with Tommy Lee Jones, he backed up the story, uh, telling Vulture he did this like tell all with Vulture that was <laughs> pretty hysterical. Oh, right? Schumacher did. Yeah, Schumacher. Okay, and he said Jones was fabulous on the client, but he was not kind to Jim Carrey when they were making Batman Forever. Tommy is, and I say this with great respect, a scene stealer. Well, you can't steal a scene from Jim Carrey. It's impossible. And I think that irked Tommy. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't understand how else you could hate Jim Carrey. Right? Yeah. I mean, his art is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't hate him. It's true. No, I'm just kidding. His art's fine. It's, <laughs> it's, but, listen, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's so it, you you hit it right on nail on the head. We're gonna we're gonna get to a, a directors versus actors episode eventually, but I just want to throw this in there. Schumacher also ended the quote with this little nugget, and I didn't say Val Kilmer was difficult to work with on Batman Forever. I said he was psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, have you seen him in Willow? It's crazy. I watched Willow for the first time recently. Oh, did you really? Yeah. His, I, I, I'm, I'm you not are great. Matt again. Yeah, I'm, you I'm, are great. I'm not a Val Kilmer fan. Like, I, I'm like he, he's not a pull for me to go and see a movie. Like, oh, it's Val Kilmer. I'm gonna go see it. No, but in, he, he's great in Willow. Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. He, love it. He's apparently very difficult to work movie. with. Interesting. But. Okay, so this is this one. A lot of people probably thought I was going to go over this based off the the title of this episode. Um, but Betty Davis and Joan Crawford, um, mostly because uh, Ryan Murphy, who mm-hmm. like American Horror Story, did feud on FX, and it was just entirely about these two. Well, season two one, actresses. but he's doing well. There are there there are other seasons, right? I think so. I'm not yeah. sure. Like um, they're doing different feuds. Yeah. So, and but this one. Oh, really? Their whole their feud series is just an anthology series of each season that go over a different feud. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, kind of like American Horror Story. Yeah. Okay. And oh, gotcha. American, American Crime Story and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Ah. So, anyway, I'm following Harper Bazaar's um, timeline on this, which is really, really fascinating. So, and I don't, I haven't watched the TV show, so I, I, I don't know how much they actually cover in this, but it's pretty fascinating. So, 1933. Well. Hammer through this. Feud apparently started when Joan Crawford's... I always forget. It's Joan Crawford or Betty Crawford. I want to say Betty Crawford. That's Betty Crawford. That's Betty Crawford. I know, You're I know. thinking yes. of Betty Crocker. Okay. Oh, I want to say Betty Pillsbury. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard, though, that Betty Crocker and the Pillsbury Doughboy have a pretty <laughs> intense feud going on. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, the feud apparently started when Crawford's divorce, the news of her divorce, overshadowed Betty Davis's first starring role, causing it to bomb. <laughs> so, like... People were like not talking about her movie, so nobody went to see it, and so then oh, because of the divorce news, yeah, mm. because it was such a big deal. That's such a stupid thing to hate somebody over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like this, she's a... this is the '30s. That's just uh, what else did they have? To... There was other shit going on. There was de- the Great Depression. They had <laughs> yeah. way more serious things to feud about back then. Yeah. Okay, so 1935, uh, Crawford marries Davis's secret love, who in return, this guy uh, Crawford says. Thought Betty Davis was a good actress, but he never thought her, never thought of her as a woman. What? <laughs> Ooh, harsh. But she's got those eyes. Harsh. Okay, nineteen forties. Um, there's they they attempt to make a truce and it fails, and then Crawford takes two roles originally offered to Davis, and Crawford is nominated for an Oscar for both oh, and wow. wins one. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I mean, all right. And so then it keeps piling up. Yeah. So, and then Betty Davis says, uh, she says, Miss Crawford is a movie star. I am an actress. 
Oh, oh. This is like damn. Like, no, like, Says the loser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> this is some old school shade. Miss yeah. Crawford is a movie star, but I sir, and I'm not. I'm an actress. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Does the shoulder thing. It's the 1930s. <laughs> so 19, 1950 hits, and there's this rumor begins that uh, Joan Crawford <laughs> said this about Betty Davis. I wouldn't mind giving her a poke if I was in the right mood. <laughs> So there's this starts turning into this oh, things slimy. like, oh, she's actually in love with her. Oh. Mm. <laughs> mm. Ah. Whether okay. or not that's actual accurate. Um It's like I, I'm I have a crush on the girl in, in the playground. I don't know how to how to how to interact with someone to pull her hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? I'm still very... two movies from her and win an yeah. Oscar. Win an Oscar. <laughs> I love her so much I'm gonna ruin her career. Yeah. Okay, so nineteen fifty four. 1952, a former friend of Crawford, they had a falling out, made a movie about a fading actress, which was obviously a thinly veiled stab at Crawford. Guess who played the actress? Betty Betty Davis. Davis. (laughs) Yes. Awesome. (laughs) Okay, so this all boils down to 1962, this movie called Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. And this is, from what I understand, this is what um, feud the TV show follows is the making of this movie it's like the height of the feud yeah so there's all this like kind of back and forth like kind Mm -hmm. of like hollywood drama yeah bullshit going on right then this happens yeah so some director was like yeah let's put these two together um like i had a death wish i guess yeah this is the movie is about it's a psychological horror about a crazy woman who holds her crippled sister hostage in an old house Oh, I mean, I guess that makes sense, right? He's like, I'm making a psychological thriller. I want to get two people who (laughs) hate each other. other. I'm going to create this like unhealthy relationship and this unhealthy like feeling on set. Smart. (laughs) So Davis signed on. That guy was method director. Yeah. (laughs) You never hear of those. You just hear of method actors. It it doesn't happen very often. (laughs) Uh, Davis signed on only if she got to play the star role. And that the director wasn't sleeping with Crawford. That's in her contract? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Davis. Dave, no, this is legit. Davis said, I don't want him favoring her with more close-ups. That's so... I mean, that's so petty. A that's, no stooping clause? Yeah. <laughs> in your contract? Yeah, no stooping. Oh. No stooping the director. Yeah. Um, at some point, Betty Davis said... Joan Crawford slept with every male star at MGM except Ooh. Lassie. <laughs> well, Lassie was was. I thought Lassie was a girl. Yeah, Lassie was a girl. Oh, was but Lassie was a girl character dog played by a boy dog. That's one of the yeah. It's a motion captured person. <laughs> <laughs> it's Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> he was even back then. He was talented. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so while while this is going on, so they're they're making this movie. Um, Joan Crawford's late husband was a Pepsi executive. So Betty Davis had a Coke machine installed in her dressing room. That is, oh, that is awesome. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah. Also, I mean, not to start another feud in, in this feud episode, but Coke is definitely better than Pepsi. Yeah, but, so I yeah. do yeah, not blame her. Uh, so, okay. Crawford also requested a body double for a fight scene because she didn't trust Davis. Oh, obviously, right? Smart. Again, yeah. smart. Smart. <laughs> but they needed a close-up shot. <laughs> Crawford actually kicked her in the head. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is amazing. What movie is this? Uh, the the Feud TV show? No, no, no. no, no. What movie were they filming? Oh, what ha- whatever happened to Baby... To Baby Jane? Baby Jane. Baby Jane. All right. Yeah. Uh, is this on Netflix? I got to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I kind of want to go watch it. I want to watch this now. Too. So then, so in re, in retaliation, she has to drag Joan Crawford across the floor, and Crawford is playing the disabled sister, right? And so she can't use her legs, so she has to pull her across the full floor. So Crawford made herself heavier with weightlifters belts like, <laughs> and rocks in her pockets because she knew Davis had back problems. <laughs> That is amazing. You guys, this is some intense shit. And then she kept ruining the shot, forcing Davis to keep redoing the scene. Like, okay, but y'all bitches know that you're going to have to keep making this movie the longer you drag this shit out. <laughs> yeah, right? no, this is this is like they're in for the long haul now. I it's know. A, yeah. 
It's been going on since the 30s. This is a 30-year feud. <laughs> yeah. A couple years. months shooting is this nothing is a, to them. I guess that's true, right? They're like, I can go all day, fucking 30 years. <laughs> yeah. Just Captain nothing. America, like, standing up after he got punched. Like, I could do this all day. Yeah, I could do this yeah, all day. Exactly. I'm just imagining the director of this movie just behind the camera, like, excellent. Yes. 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 It's yes. all showing on screen. <laughs> I will be the known angst. as the method director. <laughs> The first ever method director. <laughs> you thought Citizen Kane was good with the art tour director? I'm the method director. I create constant feeling of psychological insafety on my sets. This is this is roar all over again. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, 1963, the movie at the Oscars, Betty Davis gets nominated for the movie, but Joan Crawford does not. Ooh, but Crawford got the Oscar first originally, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Joan Crawford's super pissed about this and campaigned against Davis. I don't want to go into Oscar campaigns. It's really stupid. It's kind of like actual campaigns where you have to basically bribe people to vote for you. But she campaigned against Davis, her freaking co-star. Then she called every nominee who would not be in attendance to accept the award on their behalf just so she could be on stage. To, to get the award, to hold to get, an Oscar. To get an award. Yeah, to hold an just, Oscar in front of Davis. Just in case she yeah. won. Or, oh. Just it, in case somebody just, else won. Just for whatever. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so. That's um, amazing. That why didn't amazing. she just bring her own Oscar <laughs> and just hold it the whole time? Just stand there in front of the stage and just hold it. She's already got one. Calm this is, down, This Joan. is amazing. Like, just think of how much good they could have done if they used all of their efforts <laughs> Towards hating each other, towards like something <laughs> good. A, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Um, so, so so much pettiness. So the Oscars and Bank and Bancroft wins, beating out Davis, mm. and so Crawford got to accept the award in front of Davis. Oh. 1964 comes comes to an end uh, since Baby Jane was a surprising hit. The two reunited for another film, but Crawford leaves the movie after like one week in. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. She's like, I can't do this shit anymore. You expect me to carry her around with rocks in her pockets? <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> She's, they're what? I mean, they're hit pushing like 50 now, right? Or yeah. something. Yeah. I don't know. I'm looking at some pictures of her right shit. now in that movie, and Joan Crawford looks like a demon. <laughs> yeah. She's like <laughs> like clown makeup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beel, so, Beelzebub right there. Lastly, they got married. Just kidding. I was going to say, what? <laughs> That's amazing. <A> twist. <laughs> <laughs> who knew the story ended that way yeah it was a beautiful story spoiler alert for the feud series <laughs> yeah they got, you can tell that story for years <laughs> okay last one this one this one is just really random but it makes me laugh uncontrollably deborah winger and shirley mclean in terms of endearment okay so shirley mclean plays the mother deborah winger plays the daughter winger was possibly very high on set Mm -hmm. Like constantly. Sure. All right. And they were doing a, there's a sex scene between uh, Shirley MacLaine and Jack Nicholson. <laughs> and while they're like in the middle of this intimate moment, Winger snuck up to MacLaine and licked her on the leg. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought you were going to say like pinched her on the ass or like something. <laughs> I mean, that's just, yeah, that's a little creepy <laughs> and weird. But then my favorite line, my favorite thing is, so they're doing this scene and Shirley MacLaine's like losing it with Winger. She's just fucking sick of it. And she starts yelling at Winger to hit her mark. Get get over here, hit your mark. And Winger replied, how's this for a mark? And she lifted up her skirt and farted in MacLaine's face. <laughs> Wait, how tall is she? How was her, how was it in her face? <laughs> was it just in her general direction? There's no way she's sitting down. Oh, I That's see. too funny. How's this for a mark? Deborah Winger sounds like a hoot and a half. <laughs> she sounds I amazing. I her friends. Yeah, fantastic. Also, they're playing a mother and daughter, right? I, this feels, again, like just standard method acting to yeah. me. Um, right? was like it, just... That farting in the face was a term of endearment. <laughs> <laughs> of endearment, yeah. Like you know, that's the shit you do when you're you fart in your mom's face, you lick her leg when she's in bed with uh, you know, your dad. No, that's weird. Don't do that. Yeah, that is weird. That is weird. Stay out of there. 
Um, Don't go in that room. Well, that reminds me like that reminds me of a story I heard about the uh, the favorite, where Olivia Coleman like put like a wet sponge up her skirt. <laughs> Uh, so when Emma Stone like stuck her hand up to like you know to to finger her in the film like she felt like this wet sponge and she like freaked out <laughs> and Olivia Colman was just laughing she was a great prank I love <laughs> Olivia Colman and now they're too. feuding she's, she's and now they're seems, feuding <laughs> she seems delightful I don't she's think great I don't think it's possible for anyone to feud with Olivia Colman <laughs> yeah. she's delightful she's 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 fun I like her a lot so Deborah Winger years later um, she was in her being interviewed on Bravo and asked about the rumors and she smiled and says, was well, something true in there? <laughs> but she didn't deny any she, of she it. She didn't deny any of it. She did and they straight up asked her, did you, like, we heard that you licked a leg during a sex scene and that you farted on your McLean. She was just like, smile. She was like, eh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> Could have happened, could have not happened. <laughs> That's to say? too funny. That's um, awesome. So th- for that movie, uh, Shirley MacLaine won Best Actress. And they were both up for the exact same role. They are both up for Best Actress. And MacLaine won. And she got up there. And she actually thanked Winger. To, like, she was like, Gracious. And she says something to the uh, effect of, like, you were like having an, an actual other daughter. Mm. Or something like that. And Winger looks like she's having a great time, like doesn't mind at all. And then Sherman McLean kind of makes a comment about how hard filming filming was. And then she just goes, I deserve this. And then runs off stage. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so rounding this all up, were these performances worth it? I mean, for the ones that won the Oscars, yeah. Yeah, shit, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it depends on... I think it depends on the actor and how much power they hold on in the production, right? Like, obviously, like, Nathan Fillion, it sounds like, made um, What's-Her-Face's Life kind of hell, and then Ryan Gosling made shit hard for Rachel McAdams. Like, so I think if, like, if you are the, like, the star and you kind of have all the power and you're just being an asshole and a bully to the other person, then, like, that sucks for that other person and it's probably not worth it, but also yeah. like you gotta get paid. That's the thing about Hollywood, right? Is that like people in Hollywood put up with shitty working situations because they need the publicity and they need the roles, they need the money. Um, so I think people put up with a lot of shit that normally you wouldn't put up with. Right. But yeah, I don't know. Like <laughs> I, if the, for me, the older I get, I just be like, nah, it's not worth it. Like, yeah. fuck you. I'll just go get another part. Exactly. But, if you're trying she to, she just b- farted on me. Uh, I'm I out. Can, I can't Look, sanction that buffoonery. If that's the worst, <laughs> I will withstand a certain level of buffoonery. Farting, it fine. Like emotional trauma or like psychological torture. No, like get out of there. I'm just impressed that she farted on cue. <laughs> She definitely hit her mark. Yeah. <laughs> like, was she just holding that in, waiting for the right opportunity? Or was it just like, hmm, I, this is very serendipitous. Here's my mark. <laughs> like, it's, 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 that was great. It's a, it's really a little known talent that she has, <laughs> you know? It's just so. She was just looking for an excuse to fart on yeah. her. And then yeah. she's like, ooh, this is now. Perfect. I've been holding this in for five days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, feuds are fun to hear about. <laughs> they are. They are. They are, actually. I, like, I never want to be in one just because it sounds exhausting. It does sound exhausting. And completely like a waste of time. For 30 years. For 30 years. I mean, especially what's going on now in our in our uh, our world community, like, be cool to one another, right? Yeah. Like, it's not worth your time. It's not worth your efforts unless you are playing a disabled person and just put a bunch of rocks <laughs> in your pants. Yeah. And that's hilarious. Yeah. That's a great break. 